Welcome everybody to another video of Ancient Greece Reloaded. Today we will talk about the famous Argos Panoptes or Argus Panoptes, the 100-eyed giant. By the way, if you like the video, please hit the like button and subscribe to our channel so you stay tuned for upcoming videos. Argos Panoptes was one of the primordial giants of the Greek mythology. His epithet Panoptes means the one who is all-seeing, which reminds us of the symbol of the all-seeing eye of God. However, Panoptes was an epithet that was also used for the god Zeus. Argos Panoptes was the son of Arestor, whose wife was Mykene, from whom the Mykenean civilization and the Homeric city of Mykene got its name. In another version, his mother is Gaia. Argos is described as having 100 eyes, according to the Greek mythology. Probably, this was a future attributed to him in an allegoric way, showing his ability to perceive everything from any angle. Whenever he slept, not all of the eyes would be closed, there are always at least one eye open. For instance, we also have the occasion of an archaic image of Zeus with the third eye in the center of his forehead. He is usually depicted with multiple eyes on his body. As we can see, even if he was mentioned as a monster, in reality he was a giant, a god, with super abilities. Argos was helpful to people by killing many monsters that would create problems for the citizens of Peloponnese, an area in southern Greece. Nothing bad is said about him in the ancient texts. Argus was her a servant. His great service to the Olympian pantheon was to slay the chthonic serpent-like monster Echithna as she slept in her cave. Hera's defining task for Argus was to guard the white heifer Io from Zeus, who was attracted to her, keeping her chained to the sacred olive tree at the Argive Heraeon. She required someone who had at least a hundred eyes spread out, always watching in all directions. Someone who would stay awake despite being asleep. Argos was meant to be the perfect guardian. She charged him to tether this cow safely to an olive tree at Nemea. Hera knew that the Haifa was in reality Io, one of the many nymphs Zeus was coupling with to establish a new order. To free Io, Zeus had Argos slain by hands. The messenger of the Libyan gods, disguised as a shepherd, first put all of Argus' eyes asleep with spoken charms, then slew him by hitting him with a stone, the first stain of bloodshed among the new generation of gods. After beheading Argus, Hermes acquired the epithet Archifondes or Argus Slayer. The sacrifice of Argus liberated Io and allowed her to wander the earth, also tormented by a gadfly sent by Hera, until she reached the Ionian Sea, named after Hea from where she swung to Egypt and gave birth to a love child of Zeus, according to some versions of the myth. According to Ovid, to commemorate her faithful watchman, Hera had the hundred eyes of Argus preserved forever in a peacock tail. The myth makes the closest connection of Argus, the Neatheart, with the bull. In the library of Pseudopolodorus, Argos killed the bull that ravaged Arcadia, then clothed himself in its skin. Let us finish with the following saying. The first and greatest victory is to conquer yourself. To be conquered by yourself is of all things most shameful and vile. Plato. That being said, remember guys to hit the like button and to subscribe to our channel, it would help us a lot. Thanks for watching and stay tuned for upcoming videos.